Hello, um, good morning to everyone. So, to the, I suppose the speakers today, earlier on, we've spoken about developing culture and they've spoken about what, you know, how important it is. So I'm kind of giving you more of a, what we did and how we did it with regards to developing talent. So I suppose it's a much more tactical conversation. So before I launch into it, I suppose, how much does it cost to hire an employee? Can anyone tell me? Anyone? Six grand. Six grand. Anyone else? 20 grand. So much closer. So the average cost of hiring an employee is somewhere between 22 and 34,000. That's per employee based on the average industrial wage in 2017. So based on the size of your company, you're probably looking at somewhere in the region between 70,000 and 280,000 that you will spend per annum hiring people. And that's with you know, a relatively low attrition rate of 1%. So you would feel that this should be a motivating factor for you to retain your talent and develop your talent. But to be perfectly honest, I didn't know any of this until about two weeks ago, because I needed to put a catch into my presentation. Because I am lean in operations. I don't do l and I'm not you know, training, I don't have that background. So I kind of fell into developing a program out of need. So basically, I suppose my presentation today is going to just talk about the original problem that I was faced and what I was going to do about it, then the need for me to develop a framework in order to help people visualize and contextualize what I was trying to do to solve my problem, how the program evolved, and then the results that we got. And I suppose how this evolved, some critical questions came up that changed the direction and scope of the program to what it became. So I suppose starting off, my original problem statement was, Around 2010, 2012, we had some changes and shifts within our own group. So we just lost some talent in the lean operational excellence world. So we went out to recruit. So filled out the application, told HR, go out there and get me a couple of um, good industrial engineers at a senior level. So we basically went interviewing a number of people and came back empty handed. So we couldn't find the right caliber of candidate and we couldn't get the right experience that we wanted for our industry. So basically, you know, we still had a shortage, so we came up with an interim solution. So what we did is we developed a lean associate role. So basically this was an operator level role, and the intention there was that they would work with their lean practitioner in their manufacturing area, and they would take on some of the day-to-day -day tasks and some of the sustainability work so that the lean practitioner could be more forward-looking and working on developing you know, the lean program. So this worked as a measure, worked really well for us for a couple of years. And after a while, I suppose, we did see some divergence in that role and how people were performing and what they were doing. So we decided to kind of take a look at it again and we said, look, you know, we really need to kind of standardize the training, maybe try upskill some of these people because we still couldn't get anyone externally to fill the roles. So that's kind of where it all started. So being, I suppose, the most senior in the team at that stage, I said, okay, sure, look, I'll put together a training program. You know, that's fine, tackle it as a project. So off I went, got all our key stakeholders in the room, got the managers, the supervisors, the lean associates, our industrial engineers, you know, said to them all, lads, what do we need? What do we want these people to have? What skills, what competencies? And we came up with a big long list and that was fine. So off I went into our training department and went, right lads, this is what I want to develop. You know, where the, what courses do we have on site? You know, do we need to outsource some of this? And they came back to me and we developed a lovely 12 module program. So as part of that, I was like, right, we'll have some classroom learning. And for every classroom learning, I want them to do some on the job training or some experiential learning as well. So I put it all together, all very happy with it. And then basically I added it all up together. And then the penny started dropping, right? So when you added this program together, we were looking at over 218 hours of classroom time and nearly 500 hours of on-the-job training. So I was like going, now how am I going to go back to our management team? Which, you know, when you say I want to develop people, I want to train them, they think two days, maybe five days at a stretch, and I'm telling them that I need to take a resource out of the company for the bones of nine, six months, use a very tight resource that we already are short of to train them, and then you know, I'm gonna hand you back you know, some you know, better trained, upskilled labor. So that was my first challenge. I was like, right, what am I going to do with this? And then I got an even worse problem, and I went, what's in it for me, right? As a lean associate, I've already got the job. You gave it to me two or three years ago. I'm working it, you've been telling me I'm doing well, 
And now you're telling me that I have to do the bones of six months training to go back and do the exact same job as I'm doing today. Are you serious? So that was a much more challenging problem. So I went, I'm snookered, right? I, oh, where do I go with this now? So then I had my light bulb moment. My animation isn't working correctly, so you're seeing things before you should. But I had my light bulb mo moment, as I say, and I went, do you know what? Can I find a body that would accredit this work, right? So I have like 700 hours of training. Surely there's somebody out there that will come in and say, do you know what? That's equivalent to a heat tech level. And I kind of went like, I, I think this may be somewhere in level seven. Do you know, I mean, that was just my train of thought. So back I went to our training department and went, right lads, do you know anyone who could come in and maybe you know, look at this work and say, yeah, we feel that this would be a level seven and if people complete it, you know, off we go. So then they went out then to look externally, see if there was an accrediting body somewhere. So now I was like, right, I have to go back to the business. So now I kind of have a proposal. But I said, I need some sort of framework. I need to make this visual. I need to like, simplify it and kind of show the context of this within the organization. So with our training department and John O'Reardon, within our training department, we came up with what we call like, our framework, right? So vertical alignment and horizontal integration. So basically what we're trying to do is show the different roles in the organization, if you got the educational qualifications, how you could move up, how you'd expand the roles, and how people could fit within the organization. So we see we were pitching kind of at a level seven. So what we were kind of going is, look, Lean Associates, would normally have a kind of level five qualification. They'll do this course, they'll give them a level seven, and then in the future, if they want to expand into, say, administrative roles, they'll have the qualification, or they can go the technical side, quality technicians, manufacturing technicians. So it gives them options, and it gives me maybe a hook for that audience of what's in it for me. You do the course, you have the opportunity to advance in the future. So we came up with the framework. So we're happy and we have our vertical alignment and horizontal integration and I've got my words and I've got my pictures and off I go then deciding that I kind of have to do the campaigning in the organization. So off I go and now I bring in some different stakeholders. So I bring in some of the management levels, kind of supply chain, quality, engineering, operations, because I'm thinking this is, you know, within the organization there's various roles at level seven here, you know, they might have skill shortages. If they support this program, you know, in a couple of years we'll be able to fill gaps in their organization. So. So I bring them all in, I go through my framework and my, you know, all the program and the training we're going to do. And what they do then is they're all listening and nodding and everyone's talking and then they go, do you know what? I have someone in my organization in supply chain, brilliant, high performing, high achieving. They can't go anywhere. They don't have a qualification to get them to the next level. Like your program, bit heavy skewed to lean, doesn't quite match my needs, you know, you know, what can I do for me? But then that came from the guy in quality. Same thing, I have someone really high performance, doing a really good job. You know, I want a course for them. I want to you know, go out and get me a program for them. So now I walk out with a completely different problem statement going, I need multiple programs for all different functional areas within the organization to basically solve the problem of, I suppose, this bottleneck of talent that we have in the organization they can't move because they're pretty much lacking a qualification. So not lacking capability, but purely, I suppose, the way we're structured and regulatory environment and all the usual, you know, they had to have an academic qualification at a certain level to move up within the organization. So came out of that and head scratching. But in the meantime, our L&D department and John O'Reardon and Carrie Rocket had reached out to the Institute of Industrial Engineering and Tim Byrne there and also to the skill in it to a lady called Victoria Wilmot. So what they had done is they'd actually organized a group meeting with various other companies in the Southeast region to discuss, I suppose, the original problem statement of kind of getting talent within the lean operational excellence world. So again, we all met down in the Waterford campus and we started having the conversations and I showed them the framework and the skill sets that we wanted and, you know, I suppose our ideas and everyone chimed in with, I suppose, their everyone was seeing the same deficits. And again, the conversation expanded not just to pure lean roles, but like other functional areas where we were finding it very difficult to hire. And we were extremely fortunate that they had also invited some people from the Wartford Institute of Technology from their business school. So Darren Taylor and Aidan Walsh had come to these sessions. So they listened to, I suppose, all our comp the company needs. And they said, look, leave it with us. We think we can potentially come up with some solutions that will help you moving forward. And fairness, they stepped up and within 
a few weeks they came back with two programs. So one was a level seven in lean fundamentals, and basically this was covering off my original spec. But then they came back with this higher diploma in operational excellence, and it is a level eight program. And this program covers, has a very strong quality element, a strong lean element, and a very strong project management element. So it covered off a lot of the key skills and competencies that we want you know, for a lot of our employees, irrespective of which functional area you're working in. So now I suppose I had something concrete. So you know, back onto the campaign trail, back out to the business going, right, we have these two programs, we have top talent, you know, how are we gonna marry these up? So the thing that this program is, is it was a game changer, just the style and dynamics of the program. So from an employee perspective, we had WIT would recognize prior learning. So what this meant is that someone that didn't have a qualification of a level seven could still enter the level eight course if you have enough industrial experience and relevant industrial experience. And this was absolutely huge because we were talking about a lot of our top talent and high performers were people that joined the organization quite young, may have never actually went through the third level education system, but were performing absolutely amazing within the organization. So the fact that they could, you know, I suppose, get on and qualify for this course was very significant for them. Also the timeline. So this course is very intense, but it's one year. So historically our offerings would have been kind of distance learning, you know, four-year programs that you can do, but this then gave them, you know, it's easier to get it around your head. I'm going to spend a year and I'm going to do this rather than kind of this long four years ahead of you. There was 60% more touch time with lectures. So again, because a lot of our people hadn't been to the third level education before, the idea of the distance learning kind of being more isolated in your cubicle trying to work at night or at home rather than actually going to a lecture, sitting down, having someone to talk to, having someone to go to if you're having problems. So that was an important factor for our employees. And then as well, because Skillnet had been involved early on, you know, they recognized the need within the kind of Southeast region to develop this talent. They were able to provide some extra funding. So it just made us you know, a good option for our employees. From a business perspective then, how did it distinguish from the other programs? So one was, we had literally given them the design. We basically said, this is the skills we want. These are the competencies, this is the program. And they pretty much designed it around our needs. So it was very specific. It also then was competitively priced. So our traditional offerings that we allowed people to do, the distance learning, was costing somewhere between seven and 11K over the four years. And this comes in just over 4,000 as a solution. Then the time off work was pretty negligible between the, the various offerings. And finally, we wanted to make this like, how do I make this differential from other training programs? So what I did is because there is such a strong project management element to this, um, what we did is we have what we call a VIP, a value improvement system. So Anyone doing a project in work, you log onto the system, you put in like your project, your scope, you put in your savings, then it goes to finance, they validate your savings, and then I suppose there's a reward and recognition program as well around you know, what you've uploaded. So what we said is, if you're signing up for this program, you're also signing up to do a project for the company as part of your project management element. And we kind of, to be honest, look, we picked an arbitrary value of about 50,000, just as a, a target to give people like there was no science behind it. So basically now we had, I suppose, a compelling business case, and we also had a compel compelling case for our employees. And then like, I suppose the icing on the cake then was basically as a training solution, you know, like there's an actual VIP in sending people on this course versus traditional courses. So I was basically going in going, look, you want to de develop 11, these 11 people that we had picked. If you take this training solution, you're saving yourself 100 grand, plus we'll potentially get some more VIPs out of it win-win for everyone. So that's pretty much what we did, off we went. So basically, you know, we have some pictures here of the, people, the first few classes who graduated. So to date, we've sent 73, 30, sorry, 53 people have actually completed the course, with a further 16 people enrolled this year. Of the 53, over 70% of those have actually got promotions within the organization. So have, they've moved up various levels within the organization as a result of having that qualification. As well as obviously they were high performing before they ever started. From the employee perspective then, they just spoke about you know, how relevant the course was, the broad range of subjects, how it expanded their knowledge, gave them competency, um, confidence. They also spoke about the innovation modules and how it made them think differently and you know, applying theory to everyday life. For the WIT, I suppose, they also recognized it as, they said, look, it's, you know, it's, a, 
example of the global best practice between academia and industry. The fact that we married up a course that was really relevant and, you know, it was important for both the university and for ourselves. And then I suppose Darren Taylor and Aidan Walsh, you know, have spoken specifically, I suppose, about the enthusiasm and passion that the Boston Scientific employees, so we've sent such a cohort down there that... I suppose just the engagement that they're getting and the knowledge that they're learning as well about the business and how we work. So like it has been a hugely successful program um, from our employee perspective. Then from the business perspective, um, so these are just a sample of all the, pres of the various projects they've done. So over the past three years, the VIP, so we had set this arbitrary target of 50,000. So we have logged 8.7 million worth of projects into our system. And these are validated by finance, so it's not you know, funny money for the want of a better word. Now, some of it is cash and some of it is cost avoidance, but that's just the way the system works. So the return on investment, the return on the value on the projects has been absolutely phenomenal, like as in completely blew us out of the water. And it's about giving people that opportunity to shine and they just, they, they, they blew us away altogether. Um, and I suppose then when you look at it again, going back to, so, how much would it have cost us to hire 40 people into the organization? And if you go on the statistics, that would have cost us in the region of about 1.2, 1.3 million. It cost us 220K to send them on this course. So you're looking at like a five-time return purely on you know, the re recruitment costs. You're looking at a 30 times return from the projects that we've got from these candidates. So like there's no... I suppose it's hard to put into context, but like there's just, it's phenomenal the return that we've got. So I suppose then just to kind of summarize the evolution, so back in 2010, 13, we knew we had some hiring challenges by actually talking within the organization. We found out that we had a lot of untapped potential within the organization, a lot of talent. And we also were fortunate enough that we had a significant forecast of growth. So we knew the business was gonna grow, we didn't know where we were gonna get the people from, and now we realized we had a resource that we were underutilizing within the organization. 1415, then we had the collaboration, the engagement with both the skill nets, the Institute of Technology, you know, the Institute of Industrial Engineering. So actually reaching out to other companies and finding out the various needs, that built momentum. The framework actually was good to sell the whole, like the vertical alignment and horizontal integration, but basically just a picture to show people like, look, you can come in at any level in our organization, and if you work hard and you're a high performer, you have opportunities, and this is how you get there. So that kind of helped sell the whole, like push it over the line internally. With the last three years, you know, we've pretty much been sending a lot of our high performers onto this course. We've got a huge return on our value improvement projects. And also what we've had is this bench strength, we call it, for growth. So basically, opportunities are popping up within the organization, and now we have a pool of people that are putting their hands up and being successful in achieving those new roles. And finally, I suppose, it's just one of our strategies for retaining top talent. So depending on where you're located, like. Clonmel mightn't necessarily be the most attractive location in the country, so I suppose for us, we do have to put effort into retaining top talent in that area and trying to make them stick. Um, so I suppose this gives us growth and development pathways, and it also gives us this pipeline of talent that we can utilize when we want to grow. And I suppose we feel that that's deepening our core competencies of like having great people, great teams, and a great culture within BOSS. Thank you.